I'm really bad at expressing my emotions, so my boyfriend got me a pillow so that when we're in bed, he knows where I'm at. So when I'm in a good mood, I'm on Mogwai. When I'm angry, Gremlin. Why don't you say so? They watch my moves, yeah, to my damn I'm a skinny little bitch, still shaking ass And they shit free, niggas show me cash Fuck a broke boy, I been had a bag I come in first place, I never been last A bitch act stupid, bitch get trash Thank you for choosing Local Coffee Shop What can I get started for ya? Okay, how long have you been working here? I've been working here for about three months, why? Because every time I come here, you guys get my drink wrong So are you able to make it right? Uh, yeah, I sure can, what can I get for ya? So I want a 24 ounce iced mocha cappuccino with no foam. Okay, so I see how people can get it wrong. So a cappuccino with no foam is actually just a latte. Did you just want an iced latte? No, I want a cappuccino with no foam. Sure, no problem. I'll have that right out for you. All right, here's your drink. Nope, this is wrong. You wanted a 24 ounce iced mocha cappuccino with no foam? Yes. This is wrong. I want your manager. Hi, I'm the manager. How can I help you? Yeah, this stupid girl made my drink wrong. You get the 24 ounce diced mocha cappuccino with no foam, right? Yeah, so if you know what it is, can you do it? And can you fire her? Because she obviously can't do her job. Another part two. Okay, ma'am, well, I've been a manager here for about a year, and every time that you come in with that same order, you always claim that it's made wrong, you demand the drink for free, and you demand that the person who made it gets fired. Okay, so like my barista said here, an iced cappuccino with no foam is the same as an iced latte, and if that's not the drink you want, then you can go ahead and order the drink that you want and pay for it, but we will not be giving you a discounted or free drink today, and we will kindly ask that you don't do this to us anymore. Are you serious? You guys always make my drink wrong. I don't understand. Okay, ma'am, I'm gonna be honest. I've noticed that you try to scam us out of free coffee every time you come here, so I'm gonna give you two options. You can either take the drink that you have and leave, or you can pay for a new drink, which is the drink you actually want, and then you can still proceed to leave. I cannot even believe this. I'm going to call your corporate and your store manager, and I'm gonna get you both fired. My store manager is aware of you and is gonna say the same thing, but go ahead. Have a good day. You guys, this is why I don't eat mangoes off the tree anymore. Or any fruit off the tree anymore. It sucks because I just want to be able to do that. I just want to go to a tree, see a fruit, and be like, yeah, I'm going to grab this and eat this. But I can't because of this. So when I was a kid, my family used to visit Dominican Republic a lot. And if we were driving, we would just stop in the middle of the street, park our car, and just go up to any tree if it had fruit on it. But one time, we stopped somewhere, and we walked for quite a while to reach this gigantic mango tree. It was huge. In fact, the only way to actually reach the mangoes was to grab a stick and to throw it up into the tree so that the mangoes could fall. That was probably the funnest part. Be careful though, you didn't want the mangoes to smash. Now, I don't remember how old I was. It might've been 10 or 11. And I asked my dad, hey, can I do that? And he's like, sure, he gave me a stick. So I start throwing the stick all the way up into the air. A bunch of mangoes fall and I get so happy. The goal was to catch as many mangoes as we could to take them back home with us. But of course we decided to start eating them anyway. By the time most of my family was on the third or fourth mango, I had just started by first. And the mangoes in Dominican Republic hit different. I was already well into eating my mango when I look down and I see some. This is part two why I don't eat mangoes off the tree anymore. So I was already well into my first mango when I look down and I see a worm. Imagine I had a mouthful of mango and I look and see a worm in my food. This was my face. To do i respectfully gave that mango to that worm that worm that mango belonged to that worm now i refuse to eat any more mangoes from trees yeah for that rest of that trip i haven't been offered any mangoes from trees since then but they require some severe inspection maybe i'm overreacting i don't think so though it was a small worm it was a worm worm i hope they were happy together i can just go i can just go eat something else you know <laughs> thank you god bless this Crazy ass story time. 23 years ago, there was this mother of two children who just recently had a third child. Soon after, the newborn baby was sleeping in the nursery while they were throwing a house party. And unfortunately, during the party, the house caught on fire. Everyone scrambles out of the house and they couldn't get to the baby. And then the cops concluded that the baby had died in the fire. But her other two kids made it out alive. And even though the cops told her that her baby had died, she refused to believe it. Many years later, the mother took her two children to a birthday party 
And there was this other woman there with her child. And now the mother looks at that child and is in shock because she looks so much like her other two kids. So she goes up to the little girl and says that she has bubble gum in her hair so that she can steal a few strands of her hair. She took it to a lab and they DNA tested it and that little girl was her child. So it turns out many years ago during that house party, a woman that the mother knew went upstairs, took the baby and started the fire so that the baby would be declared as dead and she could easily get away with kidnapping her. Um, and then she ran from the cops and they can't find her. So when I was younger, I used to scrunch my hair all the time, which is when your hair is wet and you take a bunch of gel and you go like this. Well, my mom thought it was so pretty. So she came to me one day and was like, hey, do you think you could scrunch my hair before work tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. But why don't we practice tonight to make sure it doesn't look stupid? Make sure it looks good, you know? And she's like, no, like, I don't have time for that. We'll just do it in the morning. And I was like, all right, fine, your call. So the next morning she comes out, her hair is completely dry. And I'm like, mom, you know, your hair needs to be wet before we do this. And she's like, no, I took a shower last night. It's fine. Just do it, Laura. And I was like, all right fine well I do it right and it looks horrible like crispy ramen noodles okay she goes to work she doesn't have time to fix it, by the way so she goes to work and people are like hey did you get caught in the rain they're emailing her pictures of wet dogs all day making fun of her and she's like oh my god I'm so embarrassed she's texting me I'm so embarrassed I can't believe you messed up my hair like this she tries to brush it out makes it 10 times worse she's like you did this to me on purpose and I'm like you know what you need to stop asking me to do your hair for you please do it yourself I wanted to tell you the story of how this little shit, say hello, <laughs> saved a house from burning down. So everyone meet Prince. This is Prince. Prince is actually a girl. When we rescued her, the person told us that this was a boy. Turned out not to be. But anyways, that's a story for a different day. I was just on vacation with my boyfriend. And when I go away, I leave my bird with my little brother and my mom. And just as the kind of preface for this story, I want to let you all know that my bird mimics every type of sound. Like the little tweet tone for iPhones, the like, she makes that sound. She sneezes after people sneeze. She coughs. She mimics sound. I'll post that in a different video because this is going to run out of time. And my mom had something in the oven for dinner and she was upstairs in a different room doing something else. And anyways, the timer went off and she didn't hear it. But of course, my little demon child heard it and was going eh, 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 like making the timer noise to the point where my mom ran into like where my bird was. And she was like, oh shit, like the timer went off. So she ran downstairs and like the fucking oven was burning. When I was in fourth grade, I started becoming friends with this girl, Maddie. She was the coolest girl in the grade. Everyone loved her. She wasn't a mean, popular girl, though. She was really nice. One day, Maddie invited me over for a sleepover, and I, of course, said yes. So I'm at Maddie's house. We're having a great time. But one thing I didn't tell Maddie is that I'm slightly lactose intolerant, and her dad made three cheese macaroni that night for dinner. But I was too nervous to say anything, so I ate the entire bowl. And then we started watching a movie, and I'm really not feeling good. So I go to the bathroom, and I take a huge shit. But for some reason, the toilet isn't flushing. It's not clogged, but you just can't flush. So I panic. I I look through her bathroom cabinets and I find Ziploc bags. So I reach into the toilet and I take my shit out and I put it in the Ziploc bag and then I throw it out the window. A few weeks later in school, Maddie tells me that her mom is worried they have a peeping Tom coming to their house trying to scare them. Her mom called the police and asked them to keep an eye on her street. And when I asked Maddie why her mom thought that, she said, well, it's pretty gross, but he pooped in a Ziploc bag and threw it at her rose bushes. Maddie said my mom's really upset because the rose bushes are where my mom put my grandma's ashes. I was like, oh yeah, that's super scary. Hopefully they find the guy who did that. And hopefully Maddie never sees this TikTok. So this happened about three or four years ago. I'm out with my friends. We're listening to music, just enjoying our time. This old man walks up to me and he's like, hey there, pretty mama. I was like, oh God, no. My friends just all shield their eyes from just the scene that's about to happen. He goes, hey pretty mama, how you doing tonight? I was like, uh. I'm fine, thank you for asking. I start to turn around and uh, go, well pretty mama, I'd like to get to know you and smacks my ass. I go, oop, go there pretty mama, I'd really like to get to know you. I turned around, I looked at him and I grabbed him by the dick. He goes, oh, I like it rough. I squeeze tighter and I go, sir, I'm a trans woman. My dick's probably bigger than yours and I don't need a little blue pill to get it up. So please, Walk away. He goes, sorry to disturb you, you freak of nature. I go, it's okay. I could get more pussy than you any day. 
So this couple comes in together to buy an engagement ring and they had a budget of about $20,000, which is a lot for an engagement ring. But the ring that she happened to pick out was about $35,000, which is a lot of money. And she was really adamant about picking it and he was kind of reserved like, you know, it is a lot of money. But she's like, no, if you love me, you'll buy it, yada, yada, yada. And he's like, you know what, you're gonna be my wife, the mother of my kids, whatever makes you happy. So after they finally decide, I pack it up for them. I'm like, here you go. Have a great marriage. Have a great life. Goodbye. About three weeks later, the fiance comes in and I'm thinking she just wants to get the ring size or something. And she's like, can you guys take out the diamond and replace it with a cubic zirconium? Cubic zirconium is a very cheap substitute for a diamond. So I was like, uh, yeah, we can do that, but just give us two or three days. So she leaves and I call her fiance because I was like, oh, this is really suspicious. And he had no idea that she came into the shop or that she was coming in. So he calls me two days later and he finds out that she was going to break up with him. She would have kept that diamond and she would have given him the fake one. He would have returned it and he would have gotten no money back. Talk about mess. This is why you should never ask too many questions. Once there was an old lady who was widowed and wheelchair bound, living in a house with two floors with her caretaker. One day, the police received a call from this old lady's house. The caretaker had been murdered. One detective was sent to investigate where he found the caretaker's body on the first floor. Vocal cords ripped out, lying in a pool of blood. The old lady was ruled out as a suspect because she was immobile, but the detective did note that this crime seemed familiar to how the widowed husband died years ago. He had suffocated in his sleep on the couch downstairs when the old lady was upstairs. After getting evidence from the first floor crime scene, the detective asked to look upstairs as well. The old lady refused at first, but he insisted and went up anyways. Everything seemed pretty normal until a shocking revelation came over him and it sent chills down his spine. It was a detail that investigators had overlooked in the murder of the widow's husband as well. There is no phone on the second floor. The detective then suddenly heard a noise, withdrew his weapon, and ran out of the room, only to find an empty wheelchair. This is why you should always tell the guy that you're seeing that you trans. I met this guy at a party that my friend hosted. This guy was tall, beautiful, with green eyes. Like the best green eyes you could ever imagine. And he was the one that came to me. I was so shy. We hit it off so good. I felt like we were friends for so long. We exchanged numbers and days later he asked me out on a date. The dates turned into normal things like we would see each other so much. One day, we were in his basement and we finally talked about the deed. I forgot to say that his room was in his basement. That's why we were in his basement. When he asked me if I was ready to, you know, um, I was shocked and I was scared because I knew I had to tell him and I thought he knew. I thought he knew. I sat him down and I told him. I looked at him and I knew I had to get the fuck out of there. My friend came to pick me up and I never saw him again. He blocked me on everything. When I was 10, I would go on an app called Chattis that matched you with people nearby. I ended up talking to a guy who I thought was my age. I was literally the dumbest fucking kid possible and I didn't think twice about giving this random fucking stranger my address when he asked me for it. He stopped texting so I went to bed. But the next day after school I got a slip that said I was going to be picked up by my dad. But I literally never met my goddamn dad so I was confused. I went out to the parking lot and this guy came up to me and said he was my dad and I looked this motherfucker right in the face and believed him with no proof. I hopped my happy ass into his car thinking I was going to have a fun day with him. My mom came to pick me up like normal and spotted my fat ass quickly. He got out of there so quick I still didn't realize what was happening. My mom called me on my phone and was like where the fuck are you and I was like what do you mean I'm with my dad and he started screaming at me saying we were going to surprise my mom so I hung up. He drove two hours from my school before they caught. She must have been out of her head. Oh, 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 oh. My mom has always dated men that had daughters or always had kids. Uh, this one particular time, um, this little girl came over and she, my mom was like messing around with her dad. I hated this bitch so much. I hated her. One time I had a toy that she had wanted and I said no because it was mine. And she proceeded to sit on me because her shape was round and my shape was stick. 
And I gave it to her eventually because I was like, I'm not even going to deal with this. She then gets up off of me and says something about my mom. Yeah, I when I tell y'all I got up and sprinted so fast to push this fat bitch down, I pushed this fat bitch down. Pushed her, she yelled, whip, lets out a blood curdling scream like I insulted her whole clan. And I got over her and I told her don't ever talk about my mom, you fat bitch. And then she was nice to me. I was just going to the bathroom and I know I wasn't pooping because girls don't poop. But anyways, I'm like almost finished up in the bathroom. And all of a sudden, I feel something touch my butt cheeks. <laughs> like, you know that fear that everybody has, like when you're going to the bathroom, that something's just gonna pop out of the toilet and be like, blah, 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 on your booty hole? Well, I was going to the bathroom. And a literal bee, a bee, not the good kind that we want to say, like the mean stinging kind, like came out of the toilet and started crawling all over my butt while I was mid-dump. <laughs> it was something like this. This is me on the toilet. <laughs> And the bee starts flying all over the place. And I knock over every single shampoo bottle in the shower. Sounds like an earthquake. My pants are around my ankles. This bee is just like, buzz, buzz, buzz. let me get your butt cheeks. Buzz, buzz, buzz. I smack the bee. The bee is on the ground. And I take the toilet plunger and put it over the bee. And it is currently trapped underneath there right now. And I'm never going to move that toilet plunger ever again.